the perils of America's favorite game, today on Carpe Diem. Hello, I'm Rob Rowan and welcome to Carpe Diem. On today's episode, we will be taking a look at America's most popular sport, football. With the NFL becoming more and more in the spotlight for concussions and its alumni players suffering from CTE, it will make us ask ourselves, should my child be playing football? Joining us today is Charles Thompson, defensive coordinator for Teaneck High School and former NCAA Division I lineman. Charles, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, could you just, um, Go through your playing career a little bit, just starting all the way at the beginning when you used to play uh, Pee Wee football? Sure. Well, I started at seventh grade. Um, I started at varsity. I was too big to um, play junior Pee Wee or Pee Wee, so they put me on the varsity. Um, so I was playing with kids older than me. Um, then I eventually went to high school. Um, after high school, I was fortunate enough to receive a scholarship to play for the University of Massachusetts. After my four years playing there, um, I now teach at Teaneck High School, and I am also the defensive coordinator. And uh, what do you teach at Teaneck High School? Um, business administration. Very interesting. And what was the biggest difference you noticed between going from high school football to the collegiate athletic level? Um, the level of competition, um, the, the level of um, dedication you need to um, be a part of the team, um, just the, yes, the dedication. It's a big part um, that you have to give um, to be successful on the collegiate level. Right. And you mentioned that you started playing football in the seventh grade. How important is it for a child to begin playing a sport at that young age, even younger, um, getting physically active? I believe it's very important. Um, this is where you get all of your skills and um, this is your foundation. Um, the younger the better, um, and yeah, the younger yeah. the better. And did you play any sports before you started uh, football? I started off playing basketball, um, and then um, a couple of my friends were playing football. I was a big kid, so they said I should try it out. I tried it out, and the rest is history. And football and specifically, what can a child get out of playing football? In a, in a sense, what drew you to the sport? And what do you think draws many other children to play the sport? Well, I started watching football in 1996 um, during the Super Bowl. The Green Bay Packers versus the New England Patriots. That was the first Super Bowl I ever watched. Um, and the Green Bay Packers has been my team ever since. Um, but after that, um, I just fell in love with it. Um, my, my friends were playing it. I was playing basketball, like I said before. Um, they told me to come and join. I played and yeah, and I loved it after that. And growing up, what were some, who were some athletes that you always looked up to? Um, I played defensive line, so of course Warren Sapp, Ray Lewis, Brett Favre. Um, I told you I played basketball, so Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Kobe Bryant, um, people like that. And the defensive line, of course, is a very physical game. Uh, you need a lot of strength, a lot of size, and what has helped you the most to be able to excel in that position and get that Division I scholarship? Hard work and dedication. Um, I started off um, average. Um, I took it upon myself. I knew I was average, so I took it upon myself to wake up early, um, get that extra work in when no one was watching. Um, and then it was just something instilled in me that made me want to work harder and prove the people wrong. And what do you feel that children get out of football specifically as a sport? They learn a lot. Um, it teaches you a lot about your character. It teaches you a lot about life in general. Um, a lot about hard work, um, dedication. It teaches you a lot about family, relying on one another, having someone rely on you. Um, so all together, it just teaches you about being a man and life skills. 
And teamwork is a huge part of football, of course. Does that teach you how to rely on other people as well? Absolutely. I think it has to because um, this is the one sport where you have to have 11 people doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, with uh, basketball, um, you have a player score 40, 50 points and win the game for you. If an uh, offensive lineman doesn't block for the quarterback, no matter if he's Joe Namath or anybody, he's not going to get the ball off and he's not going to be as successful as he could be. And what do you feel that children can get out of football as opposed to other sports, whether it be basketball as you played or even baseball or hockey? Um, I believe sports in general teaches you a lot, but um, football could teach you about t mental toughness, physical toughness. Um, it also teaches you a lot about, um, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we touched along that teamwork. It seems yeah. that the, the teamwork in football is a lot more than in other sports. Uh, sports like baseball, it's a sport that you're on a team, but it's more about the individual. If someone's hitting well, they can carry an entire team. When in football, you know, you have your quarterback, of course, who's your number one player, but you need blocking in order for him not to get sacked. You need somebody to catch the ball. You Absolutely. need somebody to run the ball with him. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Um, with football, it takes 11 moving pieces to be successful. Um, like you said, um, with like tennis, baseball, basketball, a lot of these other sports are just individual sports where you can excel individually and still become successful. Um, with football, even if you're like a running back, a defensive lineman, offensive lineman, even if you do your job and the man beside you doesn't do their job, it could still end up bad. Um, you could still, the other team could still score a touchdown. You could still um, hold your block and the quarterback could still get sacked. Um, so it all takes 11 moving pieces. Um, it takes 11 moving pieces to be successful. Very interesting. And now that you're a coach, what's it like being able to share the sport that you grew up loving, you grew up playing, with a new generation of athletes? Um, it's, it's great. Um, it's like a 360 actually, um, or 180. Um, just seeing where I was, I like five, 10 years ago, probably less than eight years ago, I was them. I was them, um, I was in them shoes. I thought I knew everything and I didn't. Um, just like these kids think they know everything, but they don't. Um, but I've, it's rewarding because um, I'm teaching and I'm coaching at my alma mater. Um, so I feel like I'm giving back. I feel like I'm helping these kids become young men. Um, and not all of them are going to play college football, and that's fine. Um, but just teaching them how to be a man is more important to me than that. Yeah, very interesting. And um, what does it mean to you really to be able to play at your, your alma mater, your high school, and kind of give back? It means, it means a lot to me because um, I could be doing a whole hundred other different things. Um, but I was blessed to get the opportunity to teach and coach at the same place that I grew up at. Um, I still have pictures hanging on the wall of me. So um, it's, it's, uh, um, it's overwhelming sometimes, but um, I appreciate every moment of it. And do you have any sympathies for your, your coaches that you might have given a hard time now that you have players kind of giving you a hard time? I actually had this conversation with a couple of my coaches telling them I didn't know coaching was that hard. I thought it was the players go out there and play and that's it. But it takes a lot of things behind, the, behind closed doors um, you, that people don't see to make a team successful. And what were some of those things you had to learn when you you took up coaching as you made that transition from a player to a coach? Um, organization, skill, um, like you have to draft out a whole practice. Um, as a player, you don't realize the time it is. You have to move. The practice has to go by a T from like 15 minute block periods. Um, with that, um, you have to get as much work in, in those 15 minutes as possible. Um, you have to teach these kids how to tackle correctly, um, how to run plays correctly. You have to worry about them getting good grades, being eligible to play. 
Um, so it's more than just football as a coach, and that's what I've learned. And actually, we have a, um, a role in right now that takes a deeper look into the benefits of playing football, in, especially in a youth phase. So let's take a look at that. The game of football, while exciting and entertaining, is one that comes with much controversy. This past summer, Pro Camps Worldwide held four different camps in New Jersey for children all across the state to learn from NFL players. With all the risks involved within the game, we talked to players, coaches, and parents as to why they think it's so important for children to play football and why its great benefits outweigh the risks. I believe youth football is very important for child development. It helped mold me in, you know, learning how to work with others, learning how to be a part of a team, you know, not being selfish. I think today with all the technology, kids nowadays, they spend more time in the house, but I think it's better for them to get out and, you know, interact with their peers. Well, it helps him with everything in life, whether it's school, whether it's in sports, or whether it's with his friends or family. It teaches him how to get along with others and how to work with other people. I know a lot of good kids uh, that you know aren't playing in the NFL or didn't even play college football, but just those couple years that they did play football, um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of uh, leadership qualities, a lot of different things. And um, it teaches just a lot of lessons in life. Um, you know, I think football is a great teacher uh, overall for, for anyone that wants to play. Yeah, my son Colt McCoy, uh, I was fortunate to get the coaching through high school, so that was a wonderful thing for a dad. Uh, but he started early in all sports and did some, did some foot, football things as well. Uh, we didn't play contact football until his seventh grade. And his experience was great. His experience was, was that of making his team better. He, he knew from a very early age that he had some skill. He wanted to develop it, and he wanted to play in the NFL. Uh, we tried to foster that. But one of the things he figured out early was it's not all about him. It's about leadership and how to make the kids around me play better. And so that was one of the great skills that he learned that he did really well, uh, was making teammates better. And when teammates got better, he got better. When they all got better, they won a lot of games. The best thing that you get out of playing football is the team attitude, that every person is part of that teamwork. And if it, that one person isn't getting it done, it falls apart. You've got to depend on those other guys. you got to pull those other guys up, too. For one, was very involved with youth football. I was always outside playing with my friends, amongst my peers. I think it developed people skills. You know, you're able to interact and communicate with others and also just to be out and have fun. You know, it's good for a kid to have fun. I mean, you're a kid, you don't have any worries, you don't have any stress. And, you know, as we all know, when you're out there just playing around, that's some of your best days. Oh, I think all those, all the values of being on a team and sportsmanship and, and working hard. And I think it translates into the future, into everything, into school, into future teams and sports and family values. But just to get them involved in different activities, different camps, allows them to learn different attributes to build, you know, their character and learn how to be disciplined, how to work hard, how to do all the right things. And that's why I'm out here trying to get involved in the community. The best thing about your, when, you, when you're young and you're playing football, you're playing with all the kids you grew up on the block. You, you never get to experience that again. So when I see all these kids out here cheering on for their best friends and guys that live next door, it's pretty cool to see it because now, for me, you got guys from all, all different places. When, you, when, you're, when you're playing young, you're playing with your best friends and there's no feeling like that. The education that we have and the monitoring that we have about head injuries and how to tackle the correct way and how to do things not at the cost of, of the athlete. There's an amazing benefit to be able to play youth sports. What I do love about this game is that the game is evolving, and the game is aware at any level, whether it's NFL, high school, collegiate, they're aware of the risks. And as coaches, we are evolving, and we're changing the game, but we can still make it a fun, physical game with limiting those risks. I didn't do contact until seventh grade. I think if you can let kids develop, especially you know, at a young age, you develop at different times, so if you can hold off on the, on the contact part of it, they can at least learn the fundamentals of the game, they can uh, do it in a safe environment, and, you know, this is a camp that allows that to happen. It's safe for them to play football in an organized fashion rather than them playing with their friends on the street, right? They'll learn how to properly hit and how to properly catch and how to, you know, not get hurt. So, you know, wearing special equipment now, I think, I think football's come a long way where they're trying to prevent injuries. I think no matter what you do, you, you have that risk of injury. No matter what sport you're playing, you can hurt something. And I think football has gone to great lengths to, to make the game safe. Instituting new helmets, concussion protocol. Obviously, as a, as a mom especially, I know they get, they get pretty nervous about it. I think if the coaches are certified, heads up certified, 
uh, and they're doing things the right way and teaching the right techniques, it's, it's a game that is, is definitely going to outweigh the, the, the risk of injury. I mean, I think obviously that's a concern that parents should have, but I think at the same time, uh, this game provided so much for me. I, my kids are going to play. I mean, I think they're going to play from when they're young, starting up. So uh, I love football, and I think, you know, we've got to get more kids playing. And we're back here at Carpe Diem. I'm speaking with Charles Thompson, the defensive coordinator here at, uh, over at Teaneck High School. And the Roland touched briefly on the concussion issue. What's your opinion on the controversy and um, what are some of your thoughts about it? I believe that concussions are a big problem in football. Um, it's, a, it's a problem I don't know could be avoided. Um, I know the NFL is trying to take a lot of um, precautions and hits to the head and whatnot, and so is college football, but the football is meant to be a physical game, so I really don't know how we, they can get concussions completely out of this game. And we've seen a lot of things that the NFL's been doing, settlements with former players. Uh, it was, I believe, three quarters of a billion dollars go into the alumni players. Do you feel it's enough, or do you feel like the NFL should be doing more to take care of its players that pretty much made them all the money they have today? I feel like money isn't the answer. Yes, um, it can help um, the families that suffer from concussions from former players, but I feel like the NFL should do something beforehand. Um, I don't know what, but they should do something beforehand to prevent these concussions. All right. And in your playing career, did you ever suffer a concussion of any kind? Um, not on record, no, but I have um, went head-to-head -head with um, a 300-pound offensive lineman, and um, I've I've seen bells. I, um, I've heard bells, and I've um, seen stars, but um, nothing on record, no. And can you go in depth a little bit about that feeling, that that blow to your head? Um, sure. So um, I'll just give you the whole scenario. We were in um, a drill called Oklahoma. Um, when Oklahoma, there's an offensive lineman and there's a defensive lineman, and they go head to head, um, and then there's a running back. And the point of the drill is to um, go head to head with the offensive lineman or defensive lineman, shed the block, or drive the defensive lineman back, and the running back has to um, get through the hole. Um, when I was doing the drill, um, I went head to head with the guy. Um, our face mask got stuck, and um, I obviously didn't make the tackle. But um, after the play, um, I didn't know where I was. Um, and I just had to sit out for a couple of minutes. Um, but I had a coach. He was a real, like, tough guy. So um, the concussions and all of that stuff really wasn't um, in his mindset. And he didn't feel that um, concussions were real because he was from the old school. So I just kept him on with practice. And you touched upon your coach being from that old school football days. You know, you kind of shake it off. You get your bell rung. And... You get in there the next play. What do you feel has also con uh, contributed to this finally people actually talking about concussions other than, you know, those old players kind of leaving? Um, well, people are dying. Um, Junior Seau, what he went through, um, committing suicide. Um, and this is just becoming more common. Um, and I believe Will Smith is coming out with a movie about concussions. Um, so it's just br getting brought to the light now. So um, people are starting to take more notice. And have you noticed any precautions taken by any of your friends who are formal t former teammates in any of those levels? Um, now, um, concussions are taken more seriously. Um, I work very closely with our athletic trainer. Um, and any symptoms of a concussion, the kid is out for practice, for a game, and he has to go through, um, a, not precaution, but um, a series of steps to get back onto the field. And it's going to take at least a week for them to clear him to get back on the field. So I see that they're taking it very serious now. And did you have any former teammates that suffered from concussions or maybe are feeling the after effects of it now? Um, absolutely. I've seen concussions from football on every level. Um, I've had, I know guys now, um, actually one of my former teammates, he played in the NFL for about four or five years. Um, he's right now, he has neck injuries, he has head injuries, and he's working on a settlement now for the NFL, um, to get paid, but, um, he's not working right now. Um, 
he's in all disarray, but um, he's just waiting for their check. So it does definitely um, take effect on people's lives. Now, actually, we're going to take a look at the effects of a concussion, especially on the pediatric or child's brain. We spoke to Stephen A. Thompson, a pediatric neurologist at the University of Maryland, about the matter. Throughout my life, I've wanted to be a pediatrician and to take care of children. And during medical school, I became interested in pediatric neurology and had the opportunity to work with neurologists during medical school, doing elective work, spending extra time on weekends. And then I did a pediatric residency, a pediatric neurology fellowship, and I actually did additional training in pediatric neuro-oncology in brain tumor management in children. A concussion is a form of traumatic brain injury. If one imagines that the brain is a gelatinous sphere that sits in a concrete box of the skull, and then you imagine that the skull has an impact. Either the patient falls, the, the child falls down, or is struck in some way by another child, by an object, what have you. There are forces, physical forces, that are exerted on the skull that are then transmitted through the skull to the brain. The brain, imagine that sphere of jello, can jiggle within the skull. There are forces as the brain hits one side of the skull and then bounces back towards the other side. Now imagine that your brain cells are actually miniature computers connected to each other by small wires. These wires, or nerve fibers, can actually be st stretched or disrupted as the force of impact is transmitted through the brain. At the microscopic level, there is injury occurring to the brain cells and to these connecting fibers and wires that causes a physical disruption that results at times in functional impairment. One must also remember that the pediatric head, the child's head, is actually larger in proportion than the head of an adult. That weight sitting on a neck that has muscles and ligaments that are not as fully developed and as strong as they would be in the adult actually puts the child at greater risk than an adult for brain injury. So you have a, a developing brain that can be injured in such a way that can have short-term or in fact lasting effects on the function of that brain. Children under the age of 14 are clearly at a greater risk for injury from football specifically or from concussion in general. There are several doctors in fact who have stated that children under the age of 14 should not be playing contact football or any contact sport where there's a risk for contact trauma to the skull and brain. There are positives to playing contact sports or any organized sport which include peer relationships, peer development, developing a sense of responsibility, a work ethic, and physical maturity and enhancing exercise, but that has to be weighed in balance with the risk for concussion because we know that even one concussion can cause long-term deficits over the course of, let's say, a year or perhaps even longer, and clearly multiple injuries to the head, even without a true diagnosis of concussion, puts that child or young adult at risk for chronic traumatic encephalopathy later in life. And we're back here on Carpe Diem. I'm speaking with Charles Thompson, defensive coordinator of Teaneck High School and former NCAA Division I defensive lineman. And we've been talking about concussions. We actually just watched a, a video about youth concussions. And what, have you ever seen one of your players get a concussion? And, and what was that like for you? Um, I have, um, and it's, it's scary. Um, first, you don't really know what's going on. Um, a lot of them are on the ground sometimes. Sometimes they'll keep trying to play, um, but you know something's not right. Um, you have to, if you could look into their eyes, you could tell something's not right. Um, and from there, um, depending on the guy, some of them want to keep playing, and you have to take it upon yourself to say no. You got to get out, athletic director, go see him. Um, but um, overall, um, yeah. I've seen a lot of concussions on every level. And we've been speaking on the physicality of playing on that defensive line. And as a defensive coordinator, what are some steps that you've been taking to protect your players and make sure that they don't suffer not just concussions, but other injuries, of course? Well, we work on wrapping up and tackling every day. Um, when we do wrap up and tackle, we bring out a big bag so that they, to, um, 
to prevent the um, the contact of the floor, um, so they have more cushion. Um, we also give them procedure. We make them lift weights um, to embrace the blows, so um, they won't just be hitting straight skin and bones. Um, and we just tell them to be safe. We tell them to tackle with their head up. Um, we tell them if the kids are about to run out of bounds, don't do anything stupid. Um, I mean, just take precaution in everything that you do. And you spoke on it briefly, but what exactly is the concussion protocol like? I was an athlete in high school, and we had to take a test to kind of establish our own brain line, so that way they can tell if we had a concussion. Is that still being done in high school, and what are some other protocols uh, for dealing with concussions? Well, once the trainer or the coach feels that the player has a concussion, he's automatically pulled out um, for the day. And from there, they have to go get an MRI on their head. Um, and once they do that, um, they figure out if they have a concussion or not. Um, they have to go through a procedure, um, and it's a series of steps. Um, I believe it's seven steps, and you have to pass each test. If you get to the sixth test and you fail the seventh, you have to start back at the first one. Um, so I know it's a series of tests that you have to um, you have to finish, and you have to be out within without you have to be out for at least a week. And we've been speaking a little negatively of football, of course. Now speaking with the concussion issue, it's almost tough to, in this day and age, not focus on concussions. But taking it back to the positive side, what has football meant to you, and how has it shaped the man that you've become? Well, football kind of saved my life, honestly. Um, with football, I received a full athletic scholarship to um, University of Massachusetts. Um, if I didn't play football, I don't know if I would have been there. Um, it taught me a lot about um, my self-will and my determination and what I wanted to get out of life. Um, it's still helping me to this day. I get paid to coach a sport that I love. Um, I work with the New York Jets, um, and it's just continuing to give me blessings. So exactly. I, owe, I owe a lot to football. Yeah, you'll see that a lot in a lot of players. Charles, I'd like to thank you for being here with me. And if you would like any more information about this program or any other episode of Carpe Diem, you can write to us at the email address on your screen, carpediem at mail.montclair.edu, or call us at 973-655-5158. For Carpe Diem, I'm Rob Rowan, and thank you for watching.